Alright, let's look at the next uh, section of the series, and it's called Power Series. And a Power Series is a series that's in this form where you have your whole sequence A sub n, but then it's, uh, you're multiplying it by x minus some number to the n power. x is a variable. Uh, C is called the center of the power series. Uh, you can read it as the power series in x minus c. It's about c. It's centered at x, uh, centered at c. Those are different ways you could read it. Um, if you just call it a power series, I'd be happy with that. So, uh, and then what we're going to try to do is determine all of the x coordinates for which the series converges. A little bit of vocab that goes with power series. You have something called the radius of convergence, and the radius of convergence is how far away you can go from the center. Could be the radius of convergence could be, say, 3, which means you could go 3 units to the right and to the left of the center, and that would still be convergent on that uh, for those values. And the interval of convergence would be uh, all of the x values, say, if I was convergent from 1 to 5, then your interval of convergence would be 1 to 5. Uh, and then you have to manually test the endpoints, 1 and 5, to see if you converge at the ends. Uh, the way we get the interval and the radius of convergence is by using the ratio test. And, uh, geez, don't lay. I know what you are. Um, and then uh, a, a little bit of a better explanation, a generic and graphical kind of explanation of the radius and interval of convergence. When you have a series, you get um, you would first do the ratio test on the limit as n approaches infinity of my n plus first term x minus 4 to the n plus 1 all over a sub n times x minus 4 to the n. Uh, and let's just say we worked out that limit and uh, we did all of these steps and uh, we did a bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff. Uh, here it's a bunch of stuff, bunch of work. So we cleaned it up and in the end we got the limit to equal uh, let's say it just cleaned up and it ended up being the absolute value of x minus 4. Um, <clears throat> well, then what you would do is you would say uh, a series only converges if the ratio test, if the answer to the ratio test is less than 1. Uh, when you get down to this point where you have the absolute value of stuff is less than a number, this number is your ratio. Uh, so that, not my ratio, that's my radius my radius in this case is 1. Sometimes throughout all of this bunch of work you'll have to multiply and you'll move a number over and it could be less than 3, but my radius is 1. Since I know this series is centered at 4, so I'll plot 4 right here, if my radius is 1, I would go 1 unit to the left and that would take me to 3, and then I would go 1 unit to the right and that would take me to 5. And my series will converge for all numbers between 3 and 5. Uh, now, the thing is, you would have to manually test each endpoint. You would have to plug in 3, and you would have to plug in 5. Um, and to determine if you do converge at 3 or not, if you do converge at 5. But that whole thing is the interval of convergence. I can plug in any number between 3 and 5. And... I know my series will converge for those numbers of x, for those values of x, um, but you will have to test the endpoints. Uh, now that's kind of weird, just the genericness of this. Gen genericness, what's the word for that? Generosity? I don't know. Um, we do need to test the ends. Okay, so let's try a real example because that may have done more damage than good. Who knows? Uh, find the radius and interval of convergence for this power series. So here we have a specific one. Uh, it is centered at 3. And what I'm actually going to do first is the ratio test. I'm going to do the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of x minus 3 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times, uh, and I'll multiply by the reciprocal, so n over x minus 3 to the n. So there's my ratio test. And then we will... Uh, cancel what I can. I have n x minus 3's down here. I have an n plus 1 up here, so that's going to cancel all but one of them. And this is going to clean up to uh, x minus 3 to times n over n plus 1. Uh, now n and n plus, n plus 1 are positive. I'm only plugging in positive numbers for n, so the absolute values won't affect those, but x minus 3 might be negative. 
So I'm going to keep the x minus 3 in absolute values. So it's absolute x minus 3 times n over n plus 1. And what I have here is a limit as n approaches infinity. My top degree of n is 1. My degree on bottom is 1. So I will divide the coefficients. And my coefficient is x minus 3. So this limit is equal to x minus 3. And I need this to converge. When I do the ratio test, you only converge when the ratio is less than 1. And now I need to solve this inequality. So now we're going to channel our Algebra 1 skills, and we're going to solve this. Uh, it's an absolute value less than 1. I would say negative 1 is less than x minus 3 is less than 1. I will add 3 to both sides, and I will get 2 is less than x is less than 4. Uh, so I know that I converge between 2 and 4. Now we have to test the endpoints. So I know my I'm converging from 2 to 4. Let's test both of the endpoints. So now I've got to go from here, and I'm going to test x equals 2. And to test x equals 2, all I do is I plug in 2 for x, and I get the series 2 minus 3 to the n all over n, which is the series negative 1 to the n over n. That is the alternating harmonic, and the alternating harmonic series does converge. So I do know I converge at 2. So 2 will be included. So I'll say we'll converge. Um, so I do converge at x equals 2. So that's good information. Now we'll test x equals 4. So we test the other endpoint. test x equals 4, and when I test x equals 4, I get the series of 4 minus 3, which is 1 to the n all over n. Uh, positive 1 to the n doesn't change anything. That's just 1 over n. That is the harmonic series, and I diverge. The harmonic series diverges, so this series, the power series, will diverge if x is equal to 4. So we will not include 4. So my total, inter my overall interval of convergence going to be uh, 2 to 4, but I will include 2. I will not include 4. So my interval of convergence is 2 to 4. The radius of convergence is 1. And notice I did all of that, and I never really thought about the center of this series. The center is 3, and if you do everything correctly, the center better line up right in the middle of your interval, which it does. Uh, 3 does line right smack dab in the middle of 2 and 4, and the distance from 3 to each of the endpoints is 1, which is my radius. So there's the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence, and that's what we're going to find with power series. Let's look at this one. Uh, in factorial over uh, times x to the n, so this is going to be the series. Uh, not the series. I need to do the ratio test. The limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 factorial times x to the n plus 1 all over n factorial uh, times x to the n. And then we will cancel whatever I can. Uh, n factorial will get rid of the, n, the, the factorial up here. x to the n cancels with all but one of them up here. And I'm left with n plus 1, which is always positive times the absolute value of x. Uh, and what I've got here, if I put it as a fraction, my top degree is equal to my bottom degree, right? Uh, so and the, my top degree is bigger than my bottom degree. And as n approaches infinity, this thing is going to blow up, right? So this thing blows up, uh, which is never less than 1, which makes you think this series doesn't converge, right? However, every single power series will converge if nowhere else at the center. Um, so this thing will converge everywhere. I'm sorry, this will diverge everywhere. This limit is never less than 1, except when x is equal to 0. Because that's the center 
of this power series, us. This series is centered at zero. So every single power series will converge at the center. Um, because if I plug in the center, if I plug in zero, I just have a series of zeros. Same thing here on number one. If I plugged in three for x, I'll have zero to the n over n, and I'll just have a bunch of zeros which will converge. So you always, always converge at the center, but in this case, um, I don't converge anywhere else. So this thing only converges at x equals zero which means your radius of convergence is zero because you're not going anywhere. You want, if you step even one one hundredth of a unit away from zero, you start to diverge. So there is no radius. The radius is zero. And there's no interval of convergence. So if you get a case where your, your um, ratio test gives you infinity or negative infinity, you still need to remember that the series does converge at the center. Every series will converge at the center. Uh, let's see, one more. I think this is the last one I wanted to do. Uh, we'll start off with ratio test. Limit as n is approaching infinity of absolute value at x plus 2 to the n plus 1 over negative 2 to the n plus 1 times the square root of n plus 1 times we divided by the, all that stuff which is multiplied by the other sigma of all of it and now we start to clean up uh, let's do the x plus 2 to the n and we'll cancel all but one of them up here negative 2 to the n will cancel all but one of them down here uh, doesn't look like anything else will cancel. And so I have x minus 2 on top, which I will keep the absolute values on that, so x minus, or x plus 2. The square root of n is always positive, so I don't have to worry about keeping absolute values around that. Uh, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, so I'm just going to call that 2. Square root of n plus 1. And now when I do this limit, uh, my top degree and bottom degree are both one half. We'll divide the coefficients. And so the limit equals absolute x plus 2 over 2. And we need this limit to be less than 1 in order for this to diverge. I will multiply both sides by 2. x plus 2 is less than 2. And at this point, we know the radius. Once you get to the point where you have the absolute value of stuff is less than a number, that number is the radius. So my radius of convergence is 2. Uh, and then I will continue to solve the equation. Negative 2 less than x plus 2 less than positive 2. We'll subtract 2 from both sides. Negative 4 less than x less than um, 0. And then we have to test the endpoints. So let's go up here and test the ends. So um, test endpoints. Okay, let's start with x equals negative 4. When I plug in negative 4, I get the series. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 to the n over negative 2 to the n times the square root of n, which is simply the series 1 over square root of n. Uh, that is a p-series. That's n to the 1 half. And that is a p-series with p equal to 1 half. That is less than 1. Therefore, we diverge at x equals negative 4. And then I need to test my other endpoint, which is 0. If I plug in 0, then I get my series 0 plus 2. So that's 2 to the n over negative 2 to the n. times root n plus 1, and now we need to, not root n, not n plus 1, now we need to clean that up. Uh, be careful when you cancel this, that's 2 to the n, and negative 2 to the n is the same as negative 1 to the n, times 2 to the n, times the square root of n. I'm going to raise each one of those numbers to the n power. My 2 to the n's cancel, 
and I'm left with my sincere case. One over negative one to the n times the square root of n. And that is an alternating series. And if you did the alternating series test, uh, my terms do approach zero. The limit is n approaches infinity of one over root n does equal zero. That's a good thing. Uh, and my other test is one over the root of n plus one. My n plus first term must be less than my nth term. That is also true. So therefore, we will converge at x equals zero. We diverged at four. We converged at zero. And then I'll take this information right here. I'll take this information right here. I'll take all of that. And we will fine tune the interval that we got up here with the ratio test. And I will say that we diverge at negative four. So I do not want to include negative four. And we'll converge everywhere between negative four and zero. And we do converge at zero. So there's my interval. So my interval of convergence is negative four to zero, including the zero. My radius of convergence we identified a while ago was two. And just kind of a double check for myself, this series is centered at negative two. That's what makes um, this thing zero. So I'm centered at negative two. Centered at negative two. And negative two does sit right in the middle of my interval. I always want to make sure that the center of my, um, the center of the series is in the middle of my interval of convergence if I get one. Uh, 